Hello, good afternoon. So, my name is Parmeshwar Bande, and I am from Elastic Run. I have a total five year of experience uh, in software engineering, and most of it is in backend development. So, we are like early adopters of Frappe framework. Uh, from back in 2016, uh, we are using Frappe framework, and we are extensively using it for building a complex business solutions in e-commerce and FMCG domain. Also, we are providing solutions in distribution networks as well as logistic domain. So today, I will talk on how to build resilient systems with Frappe and Kubernetes. <clears throat> OK, so uh, as everyone does, we wanted to hit market in the fastest way. We uh, adopted monolith architecture in early days. So see, like monolith architecture looks like this. We have a mobile layer where we have a bunch of mobile applications. So uh, we have around eight to nine applications in front end layer. We have a uh, application layer, uh, which is nothing but Frappe layer, uh, where all our backend resides. And most of complex application, uh, complex logic and business logic is there in Frappe layer only. And we have a simple MariaDB. Uh, one primary DB for all our operations. So a monolith can be anything, right? Monolith, monolith can be a code base, monolith can be a runtime, right? So uh, there is a different advantage and disadvantage of every architecture. So monolith architecture have uh, one best uh, advantage is like we can rapidly uh, deliver features, we can rapidly develop as well as is, it is easy to maintain and it is easy to implement any features. So we uh, adopted, uh, uh, sorry, we adopted uh, monolith system to hit the market in a fastest way. So on this architecture, uh, we were at uh, three warehouses, and we almost covered 3K villages, uh, most of in Maharashtra. And we were connected to 15 different brands in FMCG domain. Uh, most of popular brands like Nestle, Parlever, and ITC are connected with us. Then uh, we were delivering around 800 shipments per day, and that was a fine uh, load balance uh, in on like monolith system. But down the line, we grow heavily. We are continuously growing, and today we are on these crazy numbers where like we have around 300 plus warehouses, and we are continuously uh, increasing our warehouses. We have covered almost 100k villages uh, across country. And now we have uh, connected almost 300 plus brands in FMCG domain. And now we are delivering almost 1.2 million shipments per day. <clears throat> so uh, when we grow from initial days to these statistics, uh, we come across a lot of challenges and uh, like to improve our system, to maintain our system, and we made our system scalable to bear such kind of loads. So today we will see what are the changes we did to uh, scale our system and to balance this uh, real-time load. So very first thing we did is we just decoupled our runtime. So basically, Frappe consists of a lot of uh, run types and components, like uh, we have web workers, we have Redis queue, background workers, Redis cache, as well as socket IO and file storage. So uh, the first thing we did is like we decoupled these runtimes just to achieve scalability on each runtime. The reason is very simple, like every business can have a different usage on different runtimes. Uh, one of uh, example is like, let's say uh, we Let's say any, any social media platforms, like let's say Instagram or Facebook, they have like, they need a vast file storage scalability because their main usage is, is like writing and reading of files because people are posting a lot of things, right? So their main concern is like they want a scalability on file storage. So similarly, we also have a lot of different business uh, like functionalities, features where we want different scalability and to achieve this scalability, we just decouple these uh, Frappe runtime, and we started maintaining like uh, separate runtimes for individual components. So uh, for this, uh, we are using Kubernetes. So Kubernetes like helps us to maintain and achieve a scalability on each level. So when the, when the load increases, or let's say if you wanted to uh, 
increase any of these components capacity. So Kubernetes is very easily giving us a uh, like feature to uh, scale up and scale, uh, scale down our system or uh, individual component, it depends on its usage. So uh, thanks for the Kubernetes. Uh, it's like simply by configuration, it's a request and thresholds. We are easily achieving uh, scaling up and scale down our systems. So uh, second thing we did is like, mm, we just segregated our read and write load of our system. So the main purpose behind it is like, we just don't want to hamper our write database uh, because of a read functionality or a read queries. So after decoupling our segregation, we come to like a segregation of read write load, load. And along with a single uh, database, we started maintaining a replica DBs for uh, our primary database. So we can see we have one primary database and we are maintaining a bunch of uh, replica DBs. We have like, let's say four replica DBs. And at that time, it's like, uh, we, in business, like, uh, you know, like there is like, let's say 10% of write load, but 90% of read load most of the time. And your write load or write queries or write APIs are very important as perspective to the business. And we just don't want to uh, like hamper these kind of functionalities just because of read load. So we figure out what are the main uh, write APIs, what are the main write uh, functionalities that needs to be up and running all the time irrespective of your maybe uh, other read APIs which is maybe integrated to a dashboards, uh, read dashboards or uh, frequently callable APIs. So this, this is helping us to uh, maintain your main components or main features always uh, smoother and uh, efficient. Uh, for example, uh, in case of Elastic Run, like uh, we are like in deep reach uh, roller part and we are, uh, our salespersons are all there in a network, uh, ground level and they're continuously collecting like uh, uh, orders from let's say Kirana stores and this is very important business uh, for us to collect orders and we can, cannot afford any failure in like collecting the orders, right? So to maintain uh, scalability, we like uh, started maintaining separate DB for these functionalities, uh, right DBs, and all other functionalities which is like uh, just just a uh, read-only data that want it. Uh, we maintain like replica DBs for it, and what what we achieve by this is like we just highly important right APIs. Uh, we segregated on different database, and heavily accessible read uh, read AP, uh, APIs also we segregated to. Uh, another replica DBs. The next thing uh, uh, we did is like scalable file storage. So uh, like in Frappe, like we have a file storage, right? And we wanted to achieve a scalability on file storage also because we are continuously generating uh, files uh, in our system in uh, across our Frappe runtimes. We are continuously generating invoices and uh, uploading proofs and evidences from customers and everything. So we integrated a Azure blob storage in our system. So Azure blob storage, the integration of this is now uh, completely uh, unlock the scalability on file storage. Because we are like, we are just not uh, need to think about how blob is like, uh, writing these uh, files and sending back these files to our uh, front end applications so blob storage unlock our scalability on like uh, file storage okay so uh, this is like uh, one of our doc type where we can easily configure uh, doc type wise uh, storage so we have we implemented two adapters one is file and azure uh, so by simple configuration, you can decide which doc types related media should store on which uh, storage. So for example, uh, here I have, let's say, if it is visible, there are four doc types and sales order related media we are storing on file storage, invoice and user related store we are storing on Azure platform, uh, blob storage. So by simply configuration, you can uh, toggle like media related data as per your need. So uh, this help us uh, to like uh, just not think about uh, file storage and what kind of data is uploading through any means like uh, through any of your platform desk as well as mobile applications. So the next set of things we did is like we um, uh, implemented a lot of things on caching. So like Frappe gives us a lot of beautiful things on cache. 
So we implemented uh, cache sharding just to like uh, to like split up uh, data of cache into multiple instances. Uh, as we are growing and we are continuously storing cache, we are also using cache like uh, in a extensive way. So we implemented cache sharding, and depends on some logic, we are just sharded uh, cache data uh, depends on key value, and. The next thing we did is like cache pooling. In case of just want to uh, keep separated cache instances, uh, instances to uh, reserve for a separate features or separate functionality. So cache pooling is just helping us to segregate our cache instances. So it's just like a, we are just maintaining a pools of a separate cache instances. Depends on features, as well as we implemented a cache invalidation. The next thing we did is like read replica isolations. So as we earlier seen, like uh, we were maintaining a primary database along with replica DBs. So uh, next we did is like we uh, started maintaining dedicated bunch of replicas to a dedicated features. For example, uh, we have different business lines, and each and every business lines. Uh, have its own importance, right? And we uh, just don't want to dependency of each others. So what we did is like we, uh, along with primary database, we separated all our replicas and uh, group few replicas and we associated those replicas to use for a dedicated mobile applications. Or let's say few replicas to talk or uh, to perform only operations related uh, complexity as well as we reserve some replicas to reports related functionality. So uh, this segregation is helping us uh, just because uh, they are separated and they are serving a specific purpose. They are not uh, hampering each other's business. So primary DB always take care of syncing up these replicas and these replicas will uh, use by dedicated uh, features as per configuration. And these way we are efficiently using these replicas uh, as per our need. Yes, so till then, uh, like, we used to have only one primary database, okay? So everything is happening with these primary database and we had replica DBs. So now we did is like segregation of write operations. Uh, so we figure out like what are the operations or what are the database doc, doc type tables uh, that are heavily writing, okay? It means like what are the APIs or what are the doc types uh, that heavily getting write and the tables and continuously growing, continuously records are getting added to their tables. So we wanted to just remove this load and just shift this load to a different database altogether. So we started maintaining a different primary database. So in, we can say like our one Frappe runtime is now uh, communicating with two primary databases as well as some couple of replicas. So here I uh, maintain two, let's say, normal tables, error log and message log, and there are a few more doc types uh, that are heavily getting writes, okay? So this, uh, these doc types are continuously growing, and because of this, maybe our, uh, like our sales invoice or let's say sales order placement flows are like hampering because of these load. So these low, if we shift these load to different database, our normal functionality and features will be smooth and scalable. So in this way, uh, we segregated our write operations. And similarly, like I shown earlier, like uh, doc type wise file storage, uh, we started uh, configuring doc type wise database configurations also. And uh, in using same like uh, same screen that I already shown you, uh, we can simply configure which doc type has to write or use which database. And using caching, we can immediately decide like uh, which um, it's like I am right now. Uh, this API is communicating with which database, and it will just pick that database details, and it will start communicating with that database. So it's super fast. So, so uh, next thing we did is like microservice with separate DB and app runtime. So till this. Like we were like maintaining uh, multiple DBs, multiple replicas, but eventually we had only one runtime. And now we, in Elastic Run, we are maintaining almost 
10 to 20 around, I guess, uh, for apparent times, uh, and they are dedicatedly developed for a different microservice altogether. So here we can say, see, there are two uh, microservices. Uh, one is primary service, which is like uh, all main APIs and main features functionalities resides there. And we uh, figure out like what are the features or functionalities that we completely isolate from our main service. So there are, let's say, I mentioned here one is scorecard service. So we have a few more services like uh, rewards and recognition as well as competition related services, which we use to run for our salesperson delivery associates as well as our uh, end customers, uh, that is Kirana store owners. So these services can independently run. So we just figure out these services and we started maintaining different Frappe runtime altogether for these separate uh, microservices. So uh, now we are basically uh, decoupling our entire features into different Frappe runtimes. And every Frappe runtime is serving a specific feature and our front-end applications are eventually communicate with all our Frappe instances. So this is, this is a very deciding factor to like uh, to achieve a scalability because we are started maintaining multiple frappe runtimes now yeah so the next uh, thing like uh, as these runtimes uh, were getting used continuously and were growing fastly and uh, like uh, all the primary database related tables uh, like few doc types are very critical doc types for example sales order or sales invoice or few maybe users or something and while using these systems and we are continuously onboarding our sales persons as well as delivery associates and they are bringing a lot of business right so every doc type every is like these critical doc types are continuously growing and down the line, it will continuously grows and it will become a little bit, uh, like little bit uh, problematic in case of uh, achieving super fast, smooth experience uh, if we not sharded the databases. So we come up with uh, sharding capability in all our app, uh, app runtimes. We always figure out uh, a primary uh, doc types in any Frappe runtime and we add a sharded capability to that database. So using some sharding logic, we are easily storing our data uh, in uh, about a single doc type related data in multiple Frappe, uh, sorry, multiple databases, uh, we can say clusters. So these are like few uh, changes uh, we did to achieve the scalability as we are growing. So the initial numbers were uh, very normal and we are continuously growing. That's why we always need to think out of the box to achieve a scalability and to provide a smooth business experience to our uh, all our customers. So these are the changes we did. And while doing these uh, changes and while adopting such type of architectural changes, uh, like Frappe is beautifully supporting everything. We never f like fail like any technical blocker in case of achieving such a uh, type, uh, such type of implementation. So thanks to the Frappe team, uh, they are really, really built a really great framework and we are like building a lot of things on top of Frappe. So like, Almost our every uh, business lines is on top of Frappe only. So maybe after Zeroda, we are the one who are like completely and extensively using Frappe only for our business lines. So thanks to the brother. <laughs>